running. It's one of the fastest growing outdoor activities, largely because it's also one of the most accessible. Mostly because you don't need a bunch of expensive specialized gear to do it. Plus it's totally not as intimidating as you might think. I mean, if you're new to running on dirt or rock and are worried you're gonna have to stop and walk, uh, you absolutely can. Cause guess what? That's called hiking, my friend. And all you need to get started is a halfway decent pair of shoes, trail specific, preferably, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Yup, we ran at least 10 miles of trail over three separate occasions in each of these seven pairs of shoes, which are all vegan, by the way, so that you don't have to. So let's check them out. First up, this is the Topo Athletic Pursuit 2. It's a trail runner with a wide toe box, zero drop, and is equally suitable for trail running, road running, or backpacking. They're light, pretty flexible, and very roomy. But to be clear, they're not barefoot shoes, just moderately minimalist. They do offer some serious arch support and heel stabilization, which is great for long distance runners and makes for a great balance of cushioning and support. But they did perform very well on trail. I felt very stable when running and the tread is more than adequate for chunky, soft, or packed soil. And I would definitely use these to backpack in. In fact, I did. And you could be too if you take our brand new Backpacking 101 course, which <laughs> We linked below. Anyway, they only come in two colors, but that's hardly a deal breaker for me, as long as both of those colors aren't pink or purple. I will say I did feel a little silly walking around town in these because of how large the toe box is. I mean, it's kind of got a little bit of a clown shoe thing going on, but that's just me. Now these do run a smidge small, so you might want to get a half size larger than usual. On the upside, they are made of partially recycled materials. For true barefoot running enthusiasts, this is the Vivo Barefoot Primus Trail 3 All-Weather FG. <sighs> that is a mouthful. It has a foot-shaped toe box to let your toes spread out, and it's thin and flexible to allow for natural movement and serious ground feel on varying terrains. And in case you're wondering, the FG stands for firm ground. There's also an SG with larger lugs for soft ground. Now, if you saw my Primus Trail SG review we did a few years ago, you'll know that I already really liked this style of shoe for hiking, but had some issues with it overall. Go check out the full review if you want to see more. But turns out I like these much better. They just generally feel great to run in if you're used to barefoot shoes. And I do mean true barefoot shoes with little to no cushion. You can really feel the ground through these, which can make running pretty uncomfortable for the uninitiated. But if you do want to give barefoot running a try, Vivo Barefoot has some great resources on their website for getting started, which we'll link to below. These shoes are also made of recycled materials and the waterproofing kept moisture out of the shoe when splashing through small mud puddles on the trail. And I had no problem running across wet rock. Though always be careful when crossing creek beds. Plus they run true to size. Next up, the Hoka Speedgoat 5. It's a running shoe that seamlessly transitions from road to trail and is nice and light. Now I'm <laughs> not gonna lie, I've never had a desire to try Hoka's. The big foam sole and narrow toe box is about as far from a barefoot shoe as you can get. But frankly, after running in them a bit, I didn't hate them as much as I thought. The four millimeter drop didn't really bother me too much on shorter runs and the shoes are extremely light. They have moderate cushioning, which is nice, but not a lot of support in the footbed. Usually I prefer that, but if you're running long distances, that could lead to some foot fatigue. If you're not running long distances like me, well then have at it. The tread is moderately aggressive and fairly flexible, but you could take these on all kinds of terrain from packed dirt to rock to asphalt, there's no problem. They obviously come in <laughs> screaming loud colors, which is fun, I guess. But honestly, I think it makes them look a little bit like clown shoes, what with the chunky foam sole and the very bright shades. But Hoka's have like a cult following, so style is obviously relative, but the upper is made with recycled materials, so that's a bonus. Next we have the Brooks Catamount 2 for those looking for the Goldilocks Trail Runner, something a little more traditional. That is, 
some solid cushioning, moderate arch support, and a six millimeter drop. What that translates to is more support when making your way over varied rocky terrain and better lift off and speed when making your way down trails, especially uphill. And even though I tend to lean a little more toward barefoot style shoes when running, I actually really enjoyed running in the Catamount too on and off the trail. They are grippy, supportive, have a big toe cap, and mud guard to keep dirt and debris off of my feet. And they come in at only 9.7 ounces. Brooks has been a standout brand in the running space for years, and these shoes are no exception. Plus, I just really like the look of these. They even use 40.3% recycled materials in the upper. You should probably order half size up though, as they run a bit small. Plus, you know, compensation for foot swelling and all that. The Lems Primal Pursuit is a great option for those looking for one shoe that can do all of it. Hiking, trail running, wandering around town, you name it. And I was excited to try these out because I'm obsessed with the Lems Boulder Boot and the zero drop footbed in these shoes appeals to me, as did the more sneaker-like look and feel of this shoe. That said, it is more of a hiking shoe with trail running capabilities. So if you're a diehard mega miler, these might not be for you. But if hiking is your first love, but you also like to go on an occasional trail run and you're looking for a pair of shoes that can do either of those things and take you to the brewery afterward, well then, these might be your jam. Especially since they have a pretty solid tread. They aren't super cushy and have minimal support, but I found them plenty comfortable for walking or running. They do run a smidge small, so you might want to get a half size up, but the toe box is nice and roomy, which I love. Oh, and do keep in mind that the Canyon color is suede, so if you're looking for a vegan shoe, Avoid. But the other colors are vegan. As for sustainability, there aren't a lot of specifically sustainable materials used here, but Lems does donate unused pairs and encourages customers to do the same. Next, we have the Merrill Trail Glove 7, which is a big departure from the previous generation. You can watch our review of the 6, though, which we'll link to in the description. The Trail Glove 7 is a minimalist shoe I would recommend to anyone who wants to transition into full-on barefoot shoes. It's a great middle ground shoe because the trail glove keeps your foot in a natural position like a barefoot shoe would, but with a very subtle arch. And it has a stiffer sole than a barefoot shoe, so while you're going to be able to feel the ground, it's stiff enough to protect your feet from rocks and from barefoot fatigue. Personally, I love the minimalist design of this shoe, especially the grippy Vibram sole and it looks like it's going to hold up a lot better than the previous generation. That comparison video is coming, so uh, be sure to subscribe for that. The Mesh Upper is a little more susceptible to moisture, so keep that in mind if you plan on doing a lot of creek crossings. But I'm happy to report that a significant portion of these shoes is recycled, which is very cool. Plus, they run true to size. The Om Cloud Vista WP, which stands for waterproof by the way, is the shoe for brutally rocky terrain and extended mileage. I mean, you are not going to feel any sharp rocks under your feet, which means you can just fly down rough trails. That's because unlike the brand's popular cloud shoe, the soles on these are much stiffer to help protect your feet. Plus they have a firmer, more aggressive tread. Honestly, when I first put these shoes on, I was actually really surprised by how different the fit and feel was from the Cloud, which is super light and comfortable. But these are designed for more serious trail running, so it makes sense that they'd be more solid. I mean, you're just definitely not going to feel rocks under your feet is all I'm saying. And they're waterproof which comes in handy if you're regularly running in puddly, dewy, or soggy conditions. They are quite narrow though, so if you like a roomier toe box like I do, or if you have wide feet, these probably aren't going to be for you. My toes felt more cramped in these than in the Hoka's even. They have a 9mm drop and are made of about 30% recycled materials, which might not sound like a lot, but On is seriously leading the way in a lot of sustainable shoe manufacturing and design. So there's that. Personally, I think the Topos might be my favorite. They're a really good balance of zero drop and comfort, 
And uh, I, I just really love a wide toe box. So it's that or the Lems for me, honestly, because I love a good multi-purpose shoe. For me, I would say the Brooks Catamount 2, just overall, because not only could I take those on the trail and they felt very supportive, but I could even run with those on asphalt and not hurt my feet. Always a good sign. Sometimes with barefoot shoes, if you're running on asphalt, it just really puts a lot of pressure on the sole of your foot. Some of us are used to it. <laughs> but I would say a close second is the Merrill Trail Glove. It's just such a well-balanced shoe right there between barefoot and a more traditional trail runner. I mean, you freaking wear it all the time. It's true. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like our town to trail hiking boot roundup and also our adventure sandal roundup, which we're about to update. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe. Oh, you're going to want to subscribe. Oh yeah. Then grab yourself some runners, hit the trail and wander on.